Welcome back to the Bayou Gorilla Gardener. So in addition to our gorilla garden, I've also got some container gardening that I basically do. So I'll show you that real quick. So this was a blackberry plant, or is a blackberry plant, and we thought it was pretty much dead. Um, I thought it was dead. I was going to give up on it. The wife said, no, keep watering it. So we kept watering it. And what, it was like a month and a half? I think it was like a month and a half. And then we got a little sprout. And now we've got a second little sprout. So clearly the blackberry isn't dead, even though I was ready to give up on it. So don't always give up on, on your plants. Um, keep them around. Keep them uh, well watered and they might come back on you. And we had a, a little bit of a, a frost the other night. And you can see my, my basil has a little bit of frost damage on the leaves, uh, the blacking slash browning of it. But it should, I don't think we're scheduled to have another frost for a few more weeks at least. I think the 10 day forecast is frost free pretty much. So they'll keep uh, growing and hopefully they'll, I haven't trimmed them in a while. I wanted them to go to flower before uh, actual winter and they, they die off because I was trying to hopefully harvest some of the seeds. So I've been hand pollinating by just touching my fingers to all the little flower pistols and trying to spread that pollen around. Um, and then I'll collect the seed and hopefully these other ones throw up some flower buds too. And below that, we got the oregano. If you need any oregano, let me know. I'll dry it for you and send it because <laughs> we've got a ton. I need to cut it back again. I it was about this big a few months back and I cut a ton of it back, dried a whole bunch and got a whole, whole uh, herb jar worth of dried oregano for our own. And then over here, we've just got some flowers a tropical that we're going to have to bring inside. I think this type of grass is a tropical too. And then begonias, I forget, and impatience. And then another another bed with some basil. We got two types of mint, but the mint really hated the summers out here. Like it, it died back pretty bad. It looks like it's starting to come back from the roots now. And then I forget, these are columbines? Oh, little baby praying mantis. Get back on the flower. Yeah, there you go. No, so we've got a bunch of these flowering. They're a pretty flower. And I don't know what flower these were, but they still haven't flowered. They've been growing. Again, I think they didn't really like the super hot heat in the summer. But they've just been, they've been growing, and this one's actually multiplying but they haven't thrown any flowers. So I don't know if they're gonna flower before it really frosts. We get a hard frost or slash freeze or not. And this little guy back here is, oh, what is it again? I've been saving that seed and regrowing it for two years now. And bees really like it because the flower, the nectar in the flower, I guess regenerates every 30, no, not 30 minutes, 90 minutes or so. So it's like a super bee flower and it's borage. So this borage, I grew originally in Washington state, collected the seeds, grew it again in the spring, collected the seeds again, brought it with me to Louisiana, planted it in the spring, collected the seeds, and this is hopefully a fall one, and hopefully that thing gets big enough and flowers too before the, the fall. I've still got probably two dozen seeds that, for next spring but I wanted to try and get some in uh, in the fall. So I planted three, only one came up and hopefully it flowers before. So I'll meet you over at the garden. This is the gorilla garden and I've got work to do for the compost pile. All right, now I gotta water everything because it still hasn't rained and due to the lack of organic matter in this soil, there's really nothing, no, no moisture retention at all in this soil, unfortunately. 
So unless it's getting water, like if that compost pile doesn't take off over the winter on, on us, I may actually have to get some bags of garden soil to supplement into the sand and get some actual organic matter in it. Because without organic matter, the water is literally just going straight through the sandy layer down to the compact clay and then running off wherever it runs off to. And the beans, definitely not going to get a huge harvest of beans. So what I'm thinking of doing is just saving all the, the bean seeds and planting them in the spring. Sort of start my own my own variety of beans, even though they don't really cross pollinate. So I wouldn't be <laughs> doing a different variety. It would be the same variety. It'd just be hopefully a little better acclimated to this climate here. Like that's the biggest reason and benefit to saving your own seeds is that genetically they know, hey. This is the type of weather I can expect. And because of that, I'm going to grow a certain way because I know what to expect. You can also, by saving some of your own seeds, end up getting a select for uh, different things like quickness to maturity, uh, growth, yield. So if you're saving the the seeds from your best plants. So in my case, this one produced the quickest. So if I'm saving these seeds over the ones from this, I think they all got eaten anyway, <laughs> are the ones from this plant or this plant or this plant. These ones, these, when I plant from those beans, they should be quicker to germinate, grow to proper adult size and produce fruit themselves. Sun actually feels pretty hot even though it's past the fall solstice here. I'm already out of water. I'll make a couple trips for the water all this and it should spring back because this poor bok choy is wilted again. I just watered it. I just watered it yesterday because it was wilty yesterday and it's already wilted today at two o'clock. So, and then this one, this is a bad leaf. So I just removed it. We'll leave it there. We'll let hopefully earthworms get to it. Start building up that organic matter. I'll take this one off too. Organic matter a little at a time. That's how. That's how nature builds organic matter, is things growing on the soil, in the soil, dying off, rotting in place, composting in place, being eaten by bugs in place. And it all that life, that soil activity, helps increase organic matter and life in general. And that's what we really want. We want life. So this has been the Bayou Gorilla Gardener. November 4th, 2023. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.